Well, I've got a repair to do. It wasn't a planned repair. I'm kind of annoyed about it, really. But it's a repair. So, this is my Cytotron 7961. It's a 7.5 digit multimeter. Now, I spent a couple of hours yesterday calibrating this thing. And it was working beautifully, right? It was working really well. Really happy with it. So, this was purchased as a working meter from eBay. And it was fine. I've had it for about three months now. But the calibration's way off, so it was nowhere near right. So, I've done the calibration on it based on my... Datron 4700 calibrator, which I repaired recently, which looks bang on as well, based on what I can check. So I calibrated this yesterday because it was so far out, it just wasn't funny. Now it's right. And this morning I was calibrating my Valhalla 2703 AC voltage calibrator, right? Because that's way off. Never actually got that one done properly because I've never had a proper AC reference source to use as a comparison. So now I've got the other calibrator, I could do that. So I finally had the ability to do that. So I did that calibration and I just finished doing it and I went to do some just rechecking and then I noticed that the meter on this had frozen, it had stopped updating. It's like, that's weird. And I thought, I can smell something, something's burning. Bit of a close inspection, I can smell it's coming from this. So obviously I quickly turned it off and I opened the covers up and the smoke came out. It's like, oh, that's not good. It smoked. I spent a lot of time looking around it trying to find what is wrong, at least visually. And I've only found one visual problem. I've seen a couple of dodgy solder joints, but that's here, neither here nor there. It's not a problem. Over here, there's two diodes, which I'll show you in a second. And it looks like they're burnt there. And I tested those diodes with my multimeter, and the diodes check OK. They're not blown. At least not from what I can tell in circuit, but there's a burn right there. I'm hoping that's the only problem, but it's weird the way it's gone. It's just very, very odd. So... Yeah, I'm worried about this thing, to be honest. Where those are in the circuitry shouldn't really have caused the problem. It shouldn't fail where it is. Anyway, I'll show you where they are. I don't actually have the exact circuit diagram for this particular board. It's a very similar one. It's like a later version, which is it looks basically the same from what I can tell. There obviously will be differences, but this is the um, 706105.05Y is a model of this particular PCB. This top PCB here is 76010503X and the circuit diagrams that I can find are slightly different they've got a 7 prefix so 76175505 for example so that's slightly different I don't know what the exact differences are but that's the one it's got this is an early model obviously now the burn is over here so here we are so you've got two zenders right there and there's a the burn right there and you can see it's just even though I test the diodes, they actually test as diodes, so maybe they're just working really hard. Now, this is probably not a coincidence. I changed this chip, LTC1052CN, and that was a 7650. Now, there's a thing on EV Blog Forum about changing this chip to get better noise. And I changed this chip out previously, and it may have died. I got it from DigiKeys, that should be a legitimate part, right? But the fact that those are the power supply for this chip, and that's happened, Seems awfully coincidental. Now, what I could do is get a thermal camera out and turn power it up and see what happens. Uh, yeah, we could do that and see if what's getting hot here. But I suspect this chip is blowing, which is then shorted out its diodes because those diodes are the plus and minus supply for this chip here for the op amp. I'm just guessing that chip did die for some reason. It shouldn't have died. It should be within its spec. So I don't know what's going on. It's a bit odd. That looks like the damage. I'm just hoping nothing else has happened. Mm. Okay, thermal camera set up. I've got it pointing at the chip. So there's the chip right there. I put my finger on it, get a hot spot. There's the chip. Right, and so the diodes will be just to the right of that. Power's plugged in. I'm going to turn it on over here on my Variac. Auto transformer. Not really old Variac, is it? Ignore the lines across the screen because I'm close and it's got to be a mirror pattern going on there because of the focusing. We'll see what happens. What gets hot? Well, there's a few things lying up around there. Nothing too bad, though. Nothing's really showing up as a dead problem. Hmm. That's concerning. I'll turn it off again. I'll inspect the board with this quickly. So, a bit of inspection around with it powered up just very briefly. This LM319 over here, which is IC203, is getting about 40 degrees after, like, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. This isn't really showing up, neither is that. So it's quite interesting about the burn, because those aren't really featuring. 
unless it's burnt open now. I don't know, it's possible. And you've got this bridge rectifier up here, which is also showing up a little bit on the other power supply board up there, but that's not surprising. So nothing else is really showing up as being horrendously bad, at least not those quick checks, but that's burnt and that's definitely wrong. So I don't know what's going on here. It's just odd. I've done some quick checks around, check for shorted rails across tantalums and stuff like that. There's a bunch of tantalums in here. This one here, for example. So I've checked across rails, across those, and none of those are showing us shorted. I haven't checked power supply rails yet. But, uh, yeah, something is not happy. Right, I'm hooked up, hopefully, into the test points for four of the power supplies. This is the plus and minus 15 volts, plus and minus 36 volts. And there's other rails yet as well, but I'm going to do four at once with this setup. So let's do this. I have to dig up my old Digitech meter, crummy old thing, but it works still. Get all these set up to DC. Alright, so that's all ready to go. Let's power it up and see what happens. Well, all the rails are there. That's the start, I suppose. So now I've hooked up to TP906 over here, which is a 5 volt rail. Let's power it up and see if this one comes on. That's there as well. So, all the rails are there, at least the ones that are generated on this board. There's a whole bunch on the other board as well, which I haven't checked yet. Alright, so let's just test the voltage across these two diodes where that burnt was, just to see if there's anything there still. Alright, so let's check those. 15.5 volts. Okay, so the diodes are still working, because they're 7.5 volt diodes. So, that's okay still, but she's dead. Now, when I've powered this thing up, once it does its first boot up sequence, it says ADC failed. I really hope it isn't the ADC. I'm putting some local supply or some kind of system around the ADC which is causing it to think it's failed. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Right, I'm going to test some power supply rails in here. These are all 5 volt rails, I think. I'm going to test them immediately. There's about half a dozen rails we'll check on this board as well. So I've hooked up the negative rail over here already. I'm going to turn this meter here on. I'm going to use this one this time. Just because it already had a clip on it, so I can just make it a bit easier. So I power it up, check each rail. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is TP501, etc. So I go there, power it up. That's there. 2 is there. 3, so it's 4, this is 3. It's a little bit low, but there. And four is there. So TP503 I need to check out, because that's looking half a volt low. And that is normal, because it's going through two diodes, because that's the supply which feeds the backup battery. So that's fine. So that's not abnormal. Now I'm going to check TP5000, well, sorry, 505, 506, 507, which are a separate supply section, which are in the back here. I'm just going to go through in sequence. So it doesn't take long to test these, so I'm just going to get it on, then I'll turn it on. That's 40 volts, that's right. TP6, 30, uh, 28 volts. TP7, 28 volts. So, okay. They look about right, although they might just 32 volt rails. So the 4 volts down, but they're both are equal, so it's unregulated supply, so it's probably fine, actually. It's not actually regulated there. So I'm going to check TP509 and TP510. So 509 is down the front corner here. It's Get onto that one. 5 volts, that's good. And 510 is down here by the connector. And get onto it. 8.7, which is fine because that's an unregulated 9 volt supply rail. So, all the power supplies on this board look okay. Yeah, it's running out of options now. So, there's a bit of a guess what I've done. I fixed up that burnt mark there. It's actually burnt through the board, so it's just carbon there shorting out between those two diodes. Diodes seem intact, I'm going to leave them alone, I think they're alright. I think it's just from that burning, so something's been shorting out across that board there with those two pads are really close together, so what I've done is I've put, basically I've scraped that carbon out, so now a hole through the board where the carbon was, because you can't leave it there, because otherwise it will start shortening again, and it'll just get bigger and bigger. So I basically made a hole in the board to get rid of that. That's all clear now. I can't find any other faults. As you saw me doing, I've checked power supplies, nothing seems bad, I've been probing around things. Can't find any actual problems. Now, the only thing that's changed from the time I got this three months ago to recently, is I changed this integrator IC to the LTC1052. I got these from DigiKey, so they should be genuine parts, be any issues with them. You know, not like you only get fake parts, you might get dodgy ones from China. 
you know, where you take a bit of a gamble there. May or may not be true. And it ran fine with that chip for, you know, a day. And it blew up this morning, so it's a bit weird. What I've done is I've put the original chip back in again. Because it's giving an ADC file message, at least it was giving an ADC file message. And the integrator is a main part of the ADC, because the integrator then drives this op amp at the back here, which is the LM319, which was also getting a bit warm, I'm going to keep an eye on that. That then forms the plus and minus glugs, which are then decoded by the dual circuitry over here to determine what the voltage is, because it's a time-space ratio thing. So there's a lot involved, but it's not that bad. Being an older gear, is, it's quite well-documented manual. You know, you can actually go through and understand what it's actually doing. And the diagram's also pretty good. So I'll put the original chip back in again. Watch this. It's working. So this chip that I put in before died. For some unknown reason, after a day, this chip died. So I'm getting the thermal camera set up again. I'm going to check around here to see what's going on because that chip there did seem a bit warm last time. So I'm going to use my thermal camera on it. I don't know if you guys can see this or not very well on camera. We'll try. That cross mark there is the LM319, which I'm a bit worried about. But that's only showing about 30 odd degrees. So it's actually not that bad. The maximum point right now is over here, down there somewhere. Let's try and get it. You're probably getting it reflection, so you can't really see. But there's a hot spot on there, which is about 40 odd degrees, 50 degrees. That's just voltage regulators. So I'm not too worried about that stuff. Another one over here. It's pretty hot there. But yeah, I mean, it seems basically okay. I'm not worried about having this thing with no airflow because it's a sealed case. It normally doesn't have any airflow anyway. But yeah, I mean, there's a hot spot over here. That's 55 degrees in that corner. There's a regulator over there. That's a, I think it's the plus and minus 10 volt reference. That's what that is over there in that area. So, yeah, there's lots of hot spots on this thing. I'm actually really surprised that this thing doesn't actually have a fan in it, you know, an actual cooling system because it does run really hot. There's another processor over here which is running at 60 degrees. I think it would probably benefit from having some kind of ventilation, but then obviously, then you risk upsetting the stability. This transformer here is one of the bits that gets the hottest, normally. Right now it's not doing much. It's not looking too bad. It's still working. Yay. Now I need to test it to see if it actually still works properly. Alright, so we'll hook up to the PDVS2 Mini. Let's give it a try. One volt. Hey, it still works. Yay. Don't forget, this isn't warmed up. This isn't warmed up. Volume readings aren't going to be right. Ten volts. Look at that. It's still working. Perfect. Excellent. So, she's not dead. That's a big relief. I'm puzzled about that chip blowing though. I don't know why that chip would have blown. Bit odd. I mean, maybe it's because of that arcing down there between those diodes. Maybe that's causing some voltage surges or something like that. Creating a lot of dirty noise on the supply. It's all just a bit weird, really. Anyway, it seems like it's going okay now. Bang on 10 volts. Winner.